they say that the kitchen is the heart of a home, but in my case, my basement is my home. I spend probably about six to seven hours down here a week, and I do um, hand building ceramics. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a cat. Uh, I make cat pins. Uh, besides being the assistant director at the Pence, I'm also uh, an artist at the artery and uh, my business name is called Aunt Lily's and I think that as soon as you see one of my pieces you'll go oh that's who she is so let's start by um, grabbing some clay this is geostone it is a high fire clay I fired to cone 10 which means I'm firing my kiln for about 15 hours at 2300 degrees that means it's really hot uh, there is an advantage to firing um, particularly in the winter time, you can stay kind of warm and save on your PV and bill at least upstairs. So this is a wire, and uh, literally I just cut the clay so that I wouldn't have to really struggle with it. This is a slab roller, which all my gear is on, and these are wonderful. Unfortunately, mine broke years ago, the coil underneath, which would allow me to roll this big cylinder across and flatten everything. So I've gone from being able to do probably 100 pins down to maybe about 15 or so. But the interesting thing about rolling uh, clay is that you get a real feel for how thick it is or how thin it is. And I was really pleased to see that uh, Linda Fitzgibbon, who is just excellent at ceramics, uses a rolling pin, so I figure if it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. Now, Tony Natsoulis, who happens to be a good friend of mine, he just takes his clay and throws it right down on the ground. Of course, he keeps his uh, studio a little cleaner than I do. And um, he's able to flatten out large pieces at a time. So, usually what I do is, if I start to run out of room, I just cut off what I don't want to work with. And then I keep on rolling and I'm going to do this really a little bit faster than I normally do so that you can kind of see the start to the finish of what I'm doing. Um, I'm taking a sponge now and just kind of smoothing out the clay because when you go to paint clay with an underglaze you want it really smooth otherwise your line goes like that and it, and it looks like whatever you're making has wrinkles and you probably don't want that. This is a cookie cutter. Um, I have a number of cutters. A lot of them I had custom made because they didn't make a princess uh, with her arms uh, on her hips and they didn't make a lady with her hair standing up straight. So I was able to find a company that made cutters. This one though I think originally I got an ace. Um, it would make one small cookie, not big enough for me. And so this is what the cat will look like and it actually will become a pin or maybe a magnet. This is rolled out a little thick for a um, pin but uh, it would make a nice magnet so I'll just set it over here and then if this cat had gone through the firing the first time, the bisque, it would look like this and it's very pristine white and you notice that the clay is kind of gray. The advantage to using underglazes, for me anyway, is that since I fire so high, the glaze almost looks like watercolor. It has this very translucent look to it. Uh, one of the best painters I've come across on ceramics is Julia Feld. Uh, she just, her brushes must be just one hair a piece, and she is absolutely amazing. If you get a chance, uh, check her website out. We brought you closer so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm going to just, with uh, a line brush, paint the cat's face with the underglaze. And uh, this will stay absolutely like how it is. So if you do a little detail, it'll stay exactly like it. And then sometimes, you know, you can go ahead and make little kitty feet and stuff like that. But for right now, I'll just kind of keep it simple. Take, like, say, for instance, um, brown underglaze and this is what the underglaze looks like. I mean it had a pristine label at one point and then I just come along and I just kind of paint and what amazes me is you can paint a hundred of these cats and put them in a basket and sell them 
and somebody will dig through and say, how did you know what my cat looked like? And I always think to myself, eventually I'm going to hit upon someone's cat. So that's what it will look like. Then it gets dipped into clear glaze. I have to wipe the back off so it doesn't stick to the shelf. Then it goes through the firing. And then, this isn't the same glaze color, but it comes out shiny like that. And I put it on a card. So that's kind of the life lesson of a cat pin. Now Natalie is going to be um, curating a wonderful bird show and she asked me to actually make a bird so that you could kind of see how you make a bird out of clay. Um, this will not be as elaborate as uh, Sonia uh, Schumacher's bird. Um, certainly not have wings out. I, I tend to wipe my hands on my pants a lot and also paint brushes I tend to do this so on any given day if I'm down in the studio and you happen to stop by you probably see that my pants are all messed up with clay so this is the bird I've just kind of pinched it together and then I come along with this wedge tool and I'm just going to put his tail feathers in like this quickly and then this tool is great because it also allows you to make eyeballs which is what I'm doing right now, I'm poking in. And then I just come back with a little teeny tiny piece of clay and make the eyes. Like so. And then I take the needle, this is a needle, and I just go ahead and I make the beak. Like so. And then if you really, and you should probably because of the, the thickness of this bird, he would be destined to blow up probably in the kiln. It'd probably be a good idea to poke a hole in it and just let some air in on him. And if you wondered how many times I poked through the top, um, more than I want to count. Over here is a section we call in the ceramic world seconds. It means that there is something intrinsically wrong with this. And to show you this piece here, how to crack, because he was just too thick when I pinched him out. So a nice crack went through. So there are a lot of seconds. And before we leave, uh, I'm going to show you what you can do with seconds because it's really a lot of fun. This happens to be a chimera that I mosaic. And as you can see, there's little pieces of my artwork that I had made for this piece. And over here is a rug. And what happens is you go out to your backyard, seemingly a nice minimalist yard and you say hey I wonder what would happen if I mosaic that planter box now that one now that one now that one um, I have been very fortunate that I have a Mark Rivera chair actually I have three I have one here and one across the yard and I made it sort of that it was kind of like front room furniture I love the doily so he made me a doily and then really near and dear to my heart over here are little frogs that Dave Gilhooley sent me. Dave was a good friend of mine and he knew the project that I was doing and these were seconds so he just threw in a bunch of frog parts and I mosaic them forever and it's just been a, a wonderful time to incorporate the work that I do and others. It's just been a, a great uh, experience to have this much fun with ceramics and ceramic people.